Greetings everyone, this is Jeff Wilkerson, Professor of Physics at Luther College, bringing you the next in our series of What to Look For in the Night Sky. This time we're talking about the week of August 8th, 2022. So, I know you watch these videos every week, you look forward to them coming out, probably watch them 8, 10, 12 times, and, and, and you know what we've talked about. So two weeks ago we talked about Sagittarius and we said we would get back to Sagittarius and, and look at some of the other wonderful deep sky objects that, that we can see looking toward the center of the Milky Way there in Sagittarius. Last week, we talked about why it was better to watch the Perseid meteor shower a little before peak this year because of the full moon washing out the sky and suggested you go look at that. We talked about open star clusters, the double cluster uh, at the back of Cassiopeia where Perseus meets uh, Cassiopeia there. And so I thought, you know, what I'd really like to do this week is connect those ideas with the open star cluster. Look at open star clusters. Start with that double cluster and slide right on down the Milky Way till we get back to Sagittarius and look at open star clusters there. But maybe we'll do that next week. Uh, the reason we don't do that this week is because, again, that full moon. We'll connect the previous two weeks in a different way, uh, starting with looking at Sagittarius again and thinking about the, the moon. But the moon is so bright and big this week, it washes just about everything else out and it's hard to look at other deep sky objects. So, so I think trying to find deep sky objects in Sagittarius would not be the best thing for us to think about on this, the week of the 8th of, of August. So let's start, let's connect the previous two weeks in a different way, because the moon, on the evening of the 8th, so for me, here in northeast Iowa, in, in the United States, uh, on the evening of the 8th, just after it gets dark, the moon will be 85 to 90% full. Right, right after dark for me, it's about 87% full. And it's sitting right in the teapot asterism of Sagittarius that we looked at a couple of weeks ago. So it sits right there. You've got the body of the teapot. You've got the spout and the handle and the dome, the lid of the teapot. All of these are interesting, relatively bright stars, but not super bright stars, not stars that really pop out to your eye when you look at them. So for instance, the lid of the teapot right here consists of Caus Borealis, let's look at the dome, the very top of the teapot. Uh, Caus Borealis is a 2.8 magnitude star. Beautiful star, easy enough to see, a little bit harder for those of us as far north as I am. If you live a little further south, you'd be able to see it a little bit better, but it's still, it's not too hard to see on a clear night. So we see a 2.8. Phi uh, Sagittarius is here at 3.2, it's this, this side of, of the lid. And the, the western side of the lid, or the southwest side, as it's tipped up this way to pour tea out, it tips up this time of year often as it, as it gets past the meridian. When we're looking at it, the, the teapot goes uh, from, from straight up and down to this way to look like it's pouring tea right out on the tail of the scorpion, which is not a good idea. I'm not recommending that you go around pouring hot tea on every scorpion that you see, uh, on any scorpion that you see. Um, if you have a scorpion CD from the 19, whatever that was, 80s, 90s, don't pour hot tea on that. I, I, you know, there you go. All kinds, of, all kinds of life advice you're getting from me this week. You had no idea. You had no idea. That's what we were all about. Uh, Caus Medea, uh, middle of, so this is the northern part of the bow. Sagittarius is an archer, and this is the northern part of the bow. The middle part of the bow is down here. That's a 2.7 magnitude star, the brightest of these, but just about the same as Caus Borealis. And Phi up here is the, the faintest of the lid uh, of the teapot is 3.2 magnitude. All of these stars are bright enough, not terribly bright, but bright enough that they should be able to hold up to this moon and you should be able to see them. You should be able to see that the fact that on the 8th, this nearly full moon, 85 to 90% full moon, is sitting squarely between Caus Borealis and Caus Medea down here, and it's right on that line. This is about, remember you hold your arm out, at, your fist out at arm's length, we've talked about this a billion times, you hold your fist out at arm's length and you, you, you have, your fist is about 10 degrees wide, and so these stars are all separate, it's about 4 degrees, 4 degrees, 6 degrees, something like that, so about half a fist width is what we're talking about, the separations of the stars in the dome of the teapot. So this, if you haven't found all the stars of Sagittarius, use this opportunity with the moon right there to learn your stars of Sagittarius. Find the spout of the teapot, 
find the body of the teapot, find the handle of the teapot. These are a little bit fainter stars, a little bit harder to see. You might need binoculars with the moon washing this out. With the moon making the sky brighter, it's hard to pull those stars out of that bright sky background. And so binoculars might help you quite a bit. So that's what we got. That's on August 8th. That's Monday evening for me. Uh, so, so what we're looking at here in the middle part of North America, Monday evening, uh, middle part of South America and Central America for, the, for that matter, uh, you're going to see this is, this is what we're looking at right here. Three days later, so we're going to take two three-day jumps this week. So three days later, the moon's getting fuller. The moon is waxing right here. It's waxing towards full, and it's hit it three days later. It is basically 100% full on the evening of the 11th. So just after dark on the evening of the 11th, this bright full moon washing out the sky so there's not much to see, except it's sitting right below five degrees. Again, say every, we're on five degree kick this week. About five degrees separates the stars in the lid of the teapot. About five degrees south of Saturn is the moon on the 11th. So that full moon, you should see, able to see the bright dot of Saturn just above it. Again, if the moon's too bright where you are, there's too much haze in the atmosphere reflecting that, that light around, you might use binoculars, but I think you can see it without binoculars. Saturn's big and bright enough that you should be able to see that. And then just a couple of degrees off, we've talked about this so much, you're sick of it. You're absolutely sick of me talking about Deneb al Gadi, the tail of the goat, is the star. Saturn has been sitting near that star for a long time, and now it's just, just a couple of degrees away. That you probably do need the binoculars with that big full moon sitting right there. So let's jump ahead three more days. The, the moon continues to track to the east against the background stars. That's what it does. And so it's moving east. Three days later, it is back down now. It started for me about 87% full just after dark, got to about 100% full. Now it's back to 87% full just after dark as now it's waning away. And uh, this then is the evening of the 14th. Uh, so this is Saturday, Sunday evening uh, for us, for me here in Iowa. And on the evening of the 14th, I, you know, I might not, just after dark, I might have to wait an hour or two for this to rise. Jupiter rises uh, just before 10 o'clock my time, and, and so, but that's just barely above the horizon to clear the trees and the hills and the houses and the lights and stuff. I probably want another hour or so. So we're probably looking more like 11 p.m. my time. The moon will be back down to about 87% full, and it'll be sitting five degrees again. This is what we got, five degrees, five degrees, five degrees. It'll be sitting five degrees south and west of Jupiter. So Jupiter will be shining brightly there. Jupiter's even brighter than Saturn, no problem pulling Jupiter. Uh, out of the glow of the moon as the moon is waning way away again here. So you see the moon near Jupiter, the moon near Saturn, and the moon sitting squarely between Caus Borealis and Caus Medea here in, in Sagittarius. So it's a chance to learn the stars of Sagittarius. It's a chance to make sure you know where Saturn is right now. It's a chance to make sure you know where Jupiter is right now because the moon's going to guide the way there. And it's also a chance to learn what five degrees looks like in the sky. If you haven't practiced it, to say, what's five degrees? When, when he's jabbering all the time about this thing being five degrees away from that thing or whatever, what, does that, what is the visual appearance on the sky of that five degrees? You'll see it here in the stars of the lid of the teapot in where the moon is relative to Saturn and where the moon is relative to Jupiter. So great practice uh, looking at angles on the sky. Hope you have a clear week, everyone. I hope you get to see some of these things and have a great week. We'll have something new for you next week. Thanks for watching.